Hey guys, Scarlett here. I hope you all are doing well. So today I wanted to talk about observing the cycles in nature. And I picked this topic because a lot of you have messaged me about being beginner pagans and wanting a bit more information on how to get started. And one of the things I always recommend is starting to just observe and track the cycles of nature. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And if you are new here, welcome. I create weekly videos about topics like tarot, paganism, and magic. And for my returning subscribers, welcome back. So let's jump into it. So one of the biggest differences I see between paganism and other religions is that pagans really kind of see the world as a series of cycles. So this is quite a bit different from Christianity, which in my view is kind of more linear. It's like you live and then you die and you either go to heaven or hell and then you're there for eternity. So our pagan ancestors really viewed the world in quite a bit different way from that. And you can really see this in pagan symbolism and architecture, which really kind of focuses in on the understanding of the many cycles of life and within the wider universe. So I think that we as modern pagans can really strive to connect with this more cyclical view of life. So one of the biggest and probably the most profound example is the cycle of life and death. So in general, I find that pagans really seek to find comfort in the cyclical nature of life and death, so that when things die, the understanding that new life is always around the corner. An example of this, and this is definitely like kind of morbid, but when I die, I would really love if someone could just like bury me like naked without a coffin in a forest so that my body could become the food for the growth of a new tree. And in that way, I would kind of live on just in a bit of a different form. So maybe that's just me. I know it's kind of weird, but comment below. Do any of you guys also want to become a tree when you die? And I find that within the pagan view, the division between life and death, it's not really like a solid wall. It's more like a veil. And as we know, ancestors are a part of most pagan paths. And there are even points during the year, such as Samhain and Beltane, where it's believed that this veil between the worlds is at its thinnest and you have the opportunity to connect with your ancestors and those that have passed on. And the next cycle I wanted to talk about is the cycles of the moon and the sun. So starting with the moon, most pagans do like to track the movements of the moon and there are certain rituals and traditions tied to certain points in the cycle of the moon. So like you have the new moon and the full moon celebrations, which many pagans call espats. And it can be useful to track the cycle of the moon because certain phases of the moon can be used to enhance spell work. So for example, say you wanted to create a sigil to bring more wealth into your life. Well, it might work best to start that process at the new moon. So as each day passes, the light of the moon is getting stronger and that's gonna symbolically connect with the increase of wealth coming into your life before finally culminating at the full moon. So that's just one of the ways that you can incorporate the tracking of the moon into your own personal spiritual practice. Moving on to tracking the sun. So a lot of pagan festivals and holidays are based on the solstices and the equinoxes. So the summer solstice represents the longest day of the year, the winter solstice, the shortest day, and the two equinoxes, the points when the time of light and dark is equal. And I find it fascinating that the earliest pagan civilizations realized that these points of the solstices and the equinoxes were spiritually significant. And many ancient pagan buildings are actually built in a way to highlight and connect with these points of the year. For example, the whole layout of Stonehenge is positioned in relation to the solstices. Now, most modern pagan 
festivals and holidays are still connected to the cycles of the solstices and the equinoxes. And this is sometimes called the wheel of the year. And which pagan path you choose to follow will probably designate which points on the wheel of the year that you end up celebrating. For example, Wiccans celebrate eight holidays, which consists of the solstices, the equinoxes, and the points in between. And if you're interested in learning more about how pagans like to celebrate these different holidays, I've made a ton of videos on this topic, so I'll definitely put some links down below if you'd like to check that out. Oh, and comment down below what your favorite pagan holiday is, because I'm just kind of curious and I'd like to find out. So the last cycle I wanted to mention is the cycle of the planets. Now, not all pagans do follow and track the cycle of the various planets, but I am fairly interested in astrology. And if you are interested in starting to track the movements of the planets, I definitely recommend you check out my podcast, which is a weekly show. And we spend the first part of the show telling you about what the planets are doing, <laughs> the different movements, the various conjunctions and oppositions and all of that kind of fun astrology stuff. So if that is something you're interested in, I will leave the link down below. So say you want to start keeping track of these various cycles, whether that be the moon or the various pagan holidays or the planets. Um, I do have a couple tips and ideas for how to track that. So for me personally, I really love having a planner. And what I tend to do at the beginning of each month is I grab my planner and I mark the days of the full and the new moon. I mark if there's going to be any particular pagan holiday that I'm going to celebrate. And I also sometimes mark various astrological things that will be occurring that month. So I've done a few videos in the past about pagan planning, so I will link those down below in case you'd like to see how I like to track the movements of the planets and the moon and the various pagan holidays. So finally, I kind of wanted to go over what is the point of this or what is the benefit for observing these cycles. And I can only speak for myself, of course, but I personally have found a lot of joy in tracking these various cycles. And those of you who have been subscribed to my channel for a while know that I really do love celebrating the various pagan holidays. It definitely gives me something to look forward to, but I find it so wonderful that each pagan holiday is uniquely connected to the seasons. So it really helps me connect with the beauty and the nature of each particular moment in the year. So for me, things like espats and sabbats are ultimately something fun. It's just something I look forward to and kind of helps break up the monotony of my day-to-day -day life. So before I sign off today, I do have a big announcement. So I just launched my Patreon account and I'd love for you guys to take a moment to check it out and see if this is something you are interested in supporting. So over the past year, I feel like I've really kind of figured out what my life's mission is here on earth. And I know that's a little intense to say, but the reason I created my Patreon account is because I'm really trying to achieve three goals. The first one is I want to provide free educational content like this that can help people reconnect and learn about the traditions of their pagan ancestors. And secondly, I really want to kind of help people develop a meaningful connection with the divine. And thirdly, I want to create content that helps educate people on how they can live life sustainably and in harmony with nature. So over the past few years, all the content I've created through YouTube and through my blog, I've created in service to this goal. I really want to become this free educational resource for you guys, for everyone out there wanting to learn and discover more about their own spiritual path. And the Patreon is really just a way that can help ensure that I can continue doing this for you guys and providing content that hopefully inspires and educates. 
And I know that by working together, you and I can really create a stronger pagan community. And I do have some pie in the sky long-term goals, such as creating physical temples and spaces for our pagan community. So that's one of the things I'd hopefully like to do down the road through my Patreon as well. So if you've been enjoying this content and if you share a similar goal as I do, I do hope you will take a moment to click the Patreon link down below and consider supporting me in this endeavor. So thank you guys so much for being here for me and thanks for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and definitely leave your comments down below. I'm looking forward to reading them and I'll see you all next week. Bye.